Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, pro physique athlete. Today I'm going to be sharing a full science-based four-day hypertrophy program based on the Dr. Swole split. This is a four-day hybrid split that I produced myself that combines the Arnold split and push-pull into a four-day setup. This program combines some of the unique features of both of these splits into a four-day setup that works particularly well. Briefly, the Arnold split typically divides your body up into three days. You have chest and back, shoulders and arms, and legs. In push pull we divide up our body into two main days on push days you train muscles involved in pushing movements so like chest triceps and shoulders as well as those involved in more pushing type leg movements those involving your quads and calves on pull days you train muscles involved in pulling movements so your back and biceps as well as those and more pulling type leg movements meaning deadlift type movements so glutes and hamstrings now one of the issues with a lot of standard splits in bodybuilding is that arms typically come after your pushing and pulling training furthermore there's also usually uneven fatigue distribution where you have tough leg days compared to easier upper body days. This split addresses those issues in a unique four day setup. We're going to start off with a program walkthrough where I share everything you'll need to know to run the program yourself including exercises, sets and reps. This is going to be a moderate volume program well designed for an advanced athlete. After that we'll talk about the weekly setup or how to spread out your days across the week and finally we'll talk about the pros and cons of this Dr. Swole split program. Okay, let's do a program walkthrough. So this is Dr. Swole's four day hybrid split program. It's a moderate volume program set up for an advanced athlete. We have day one, day two, day three, and day four. Here are the exercises and here are the sets and reps. Down here, we have the total number of sets for each workout. So you have an idea of workout length. And down here, we have our total weekly muscle group set volumes. And you'll see that this is a moderate volume program. Now as a brief overview note that each day is labeled as separate. And you'll see in a bit how each of these days has slightly unique properties. You'll see that there's a common combination of the push pull and Arnold splits. So we combine the push side of legs, which trains our quads and our calves with chest and back. And then on our other day, we have our pulled type leg training, which involves glutes and hamstrings. And then we have our shoulder and arm training. Let's start off with day one. We have Smith machine squats for the quads, three sets of six to 10. After that, we have leg press for the quads, three sets of eight to 12, and you can superset with leg press calf raises while you're on the leg press machine. Here for calf raises, we have a mile rep setup. So here's my notation. You start off with one top set of 10 to 15 reps, and then you take about 10 seconds rest, and then you do seven mini sets of three to five reps, only taking 10 seconds of rest in between. This is like a variation of rest pause sets, but the idea is that you're staying in that close to failure zone, so you're taking advantage of those effective reps. I'm approximating this as about five straight sets. Next, we have machine bench press for the chest, four sets of eight to 12, followed by cable rows for the back, four sets of six to 10. In this program, cable rows are actually a main heavy movement for you. Since we're talking about advanced athletes here who can move a lot of weight and cause a lot of fatigue, I've actually stayed away from big, heavy axial fatigue movements. So this is why you won't see heavy squats or heavy bent rows in this program. Next, we have single arm lab pull downs, three sets of 10 to 15 for the back. The single arm aspect of this is really nice for getting a big stretch, but you do need to make sure that you're really careful with your technique on these to make sure you're actually overloading your lats. So I do consider these as more of an advanced exercise. Then we have cable upright rows for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. I know these don't actually fit into our push legs and chest back setup for day one, but I did slip them in here to give you some more volume for your side delts. And they are kind of a back movement since they train the traps as well. Next, we have day two, and we start off with machine overhead press. Three sets of six to 10, followed by Romanian deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of five to eight. You'll see in a lot of my programs, I typically start off with the biggest heavy movement first, but here we're actually putting some of our overhead work before our big heavy Romanian deadlift. This is because as an advanced athlete, you'll generate so much fatigue with these movements that it could impact some of your heavy pressing work. This is a little bit of personal preference, so see what works for you. Next, we have Smith Machine Single Leg Squats. I count these for quads and glutes and hamstrings. They're kind of like a standing lunge in the Smith Machine. This is a great option for more advanced athletes because it takes some of the stabilization out of the movement and makes it less fatiguing. Next, we have Hammer Curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10, and you can superset these with dumbbell close grip bench presses, which I count for triceps and chest, four sets of six to 10. I like programming Hammer Curls heavy. I find them to be a very strong movement. Plus, I think the brachial radialis is very important for giving you beefy forearms. So I've programmed these in a lower rep range. Dumbbell close grip bench presses are a cool variation of the standard barbell close grip bench press. As you know, I'm a big fan of close grip bench pressing for your triceps. I think it's just an awesome way to overload them. And this is a movement that I've been having great success with lately. You'll notice that I actually integrate a lot of the things that I've been testing out in my current programming in the programs that I put out on YouTube. 
Next, we have Bayesian curls for the biceps, two sets of 10 to 15. These are a standing bicep cable curl where your arm is actually behind your body. Next, we have side lying lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of 10 to 15. For these, I like to lean against a bench that's set at about 45 to 60 degrees. This allows you to put more tension at the bottom of the movement to train your delts in the stretched position. You'll notice that with normal dumbbell lateral raises, your delts get very little tension at the bottom of the movement. Next, we have day three, and we start off with incline dumbbell bench press for the chest, four sets. And we're using a top set back off method here. You guys know I love this type of programming. One top set of six to 10 reps, followed by three back off sets of six to 10 reps with about 10% of the weight dropped. Then we have hack squats for the quads, three sets of eight to 12. Following hack squats, we have leg extensions for the quads, three sets of 12 to 20. As you become advanced, you're probably gonna start wanting to access more exotic rep ranges. You'll see that in my beginner programs, I'm a lot more conservative with my rep ranges. That is, a lot more work is just in the six to 12 rep range. But as an advanced athlete, you wanna be expanding outward in order to access new avenues for muscle growth. Next, we have machine lat pull downs for the back, four sets of eight to 12. Following these, we have chest supported rows to the back, three sets of 12 to 20. I really like chest supported rows, especially for advanced athletes because it takes your lower back out of the equation and it allows you to get a great stimulus on your upper back without causing as much fatigue. Next, we have cable rows for the side delts again, three sets of 12 to 20. And finally, machine calf raises. Again, we're using a mile rep setup. One top set of 12 to 20 reps, followed by seven mini sets of three to five reps. Next, we have day four and we start off with barbell back extensions for the glutes and hamstrings three sets of six to ten following that we have leg curls for the hamstrings three sets of 10 to 15. notice that on day three i have very quad dominant exercises for my legs and on day four i have very gluten and hamstring dominant exercises for this barbell back extension you'll be using the back extension machine set at about 45 to 55 degrees and this machine really takes your quads out of the equation thus i program these days in order to come back to back so you don't have interference with your leg training Next, we have cable curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12. You can superset these with cable overhead extensions for the triceps, three sets of eight to 12. After that, machine preacher curls, also for the biceps, two sets of 12 to 20. Cable press downs for the triceps, three sets of 10 to 15. And you can superset these with cable lateral raises for the side delts, four sets of 12 to 20. Notice that this program actually doesn't have any squats or deadlifts from the ground. This is presuming that you are an advanced athlete where fatigue is a big issue. For someone who's able to deadlift a lot of weight from the floor, for example, this will actually produce a lot of fatigue because of axial loading. That is the compressive forces on your spine. So at a high level, deadlifts might not actually be the best stimulus to fatigue option. You'll also notice that there is a lot of machine work in this program. And again, this is to give you more stabilization for those advanced athletes who really need to control their fatigue. Okay, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about the weekly setup. Here's my preferred layout. We have day one, rest, day two, rest, day three, day four, and rest. Now, I specifically designed this program in this way to leverage some of the unique benefits. First of all, you'll notice that I named the workouts day one, day two, day three, and day four, and not just day one, day two, day one, day two. This is because these two workouts later in the week are inherently different. Since we brought in this push-pull setup into the program that is dividing our leg training across all of our days, when you have a four-day setup, two of those days are gonna come back to back, and you need to be careful about this in your programming. A lot of people would balk at the idea of training legs twice in a row. But since we're using the push-pull setup as a subset in this split, you can do it. Because if you divide up very quad focus versus very gluten hamstring dominant exercises, you can actually place them back to back without much of an issue. So know that this program was specifically designed to have these two days more spread out and these two days back to back. You will also notice that I put overall more difficult exercises on day one and day two, and this is to take advantage of the fact that we have rest days surrounding these two days. You should really think about your rest days as gold mines for recovery. That is when you know you're gonna have more rest surrounding a workout, you can train harder. The next thing I want you to notice about the split is that your shoulder and arm training usually comes after your direct chest and back training. This applies more so when the days come back to back, but you typically want to train your more compound movements the day before, because if you started off with your direct arm work and then train chest and back the next day, you might impact your chest and back training if you have sore arms, but this doesn't happen so much the other way around. Next, when given the choice with the push-pull layout, when those two days come back to back, I like having the push segment come before pull in terms of leg training. This is because heavy pulling movements tend to be more fatiguing overall than squat type movements. However, this isn't so much of an issue in this program since I designed it for the advanced athlete who is going to be using less fatiguing movements. If you're trying to program in heavy squats and deadlifts, this might be more of an issue. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this Dr. Swole split. 
with this hybridization of Arnold and push pull, you get to train your shoulders and arms when they're fresh. And this is a big advantage of the Arnold split setup. As I mentioned earlier, shoulders and arms typically come after your main chest and back movements and their performance can be impacted if they're already fatigued. Having a session where you can train arms and shoulders when you're fresh can make a big difference in how well you're able to perform on those movements. And I do think shoulders and arms are lacking for a lot of naturals, so this is going to be a big advantage. Next, you get a high frequency for shoulder and arm training. Since the biceps and triceps get trained indirectly on your chest and back movements, when you split up your chest and back and shoulder and arm training, you're actually getting a four times per week frequency for the smaller muscle groups. And these muscle groups tend to do well with higher frequencies. Next, this split has excellent fatigue distribution. You can actually categorize this as a modified full body split since you're training some muscle groups from your lower body and some muscle groups from your upper body in each workout. This really evens out the stress across workouts so you don't have one really tough leg day and a really easy arm day. I think this is particularly of value in an advanced program, so I think this split works really well for people who have more experience. If you're able to actually push a lot of weight as an advanced athlete, it's really exhausting to try and put all of your leg training into one or two workouts, especially if you have high volume requirements. Spreading out the frequency can allow you to add in more sets across the week in total if needed. And this brings us to our next point, which is we get a high frequency for leg training. This is actually a rare feature of this split that isn't involved in most other common splits. Even a four day upper lower or a six day push pull leg split only trains your legs twice per week. Okay, finally, let's talk about cons of this Arnold push pull hybrid split. First of all, your leg training comes back to back later in the week. This is something we mentioned that could be an issue. However, I do put an asterisk here because we address this in this program by choosing exercises that are very quad dominant to put on day three and very gluten hamstring dominant to put on day four. This way you don't have interference between those days. Also, as an advanced athlete, you should be able to auto-regulate, that is, modify the intensity of your training based on how well you're feeling that day. So if on day four, you're really exhausted from day three, you can modify the amount of weight and rev scheme that you're using. So I actually don't see this as an issue if you're able to program around it. The other con is similar to the last one, and that is that shoulders and chest come back to back later in the week. On day three and day four, you have chest training and then shoulder training the next day. Again, you can get around this with careful exercise selection, but some people do complain about having issues if they have shoulder problems. Again, careful programming will get you out of this. Now we'll be sharing this full program as laid out in an Excel file in my Facebook group. So if you haven't already joined the group, find the link in the description below, join the group and you can download the program for free. If you'd like this program, check out this video where I share another program that's based on four days per week using the Dr. Swole split, that is the high hybrid push-pull and Arnold split. For a lot of people, this actually would be the best split for four days per week. Definitely check it out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.